So there's a lot of things you can do as a homeowner or a prospective seller to get your house prepared to go to market. And a lot of times realtors won't point out these little things I'm gonna go over because they don't wanna hurt your feelings if you're a seller. But today I wanted to go over some simple steps that you could do to prepare your house to go to market and maximize those offers and walk away with the most money in your pocket. So number one, you wanna make sure you're identifying the little quirks within your house. Let's be honest, there's gonna be wear and tear in that house if you've been there for at least a few years. And to you, you might not recognize these things right off the bat but as prospective buyers walk into the house this can be a make or break thing so you want to identify the potential fixes that a buyer will come in and ask for during escrow and if you walk around your house and identify some paint chips or discoloring on walls you might want to get a painter in there and get quotes ahead of time. If you're not willing to make these changes to your house, you want to be locked and loaded and ready and prepared for a buyer who does submit an offer on your house that you do accept to be ahead of the game and know exactly what a painter is going to charge to paint a certain wall or paint the whole interior of the house if there are a lot of marks, chips, etc. So as you walk around the house and you notice a lot of pairs that need to be done, whether it's electrical, plumbing, you've been having issues with lights, you've had your countertop chipped off, you've had little minor fixes here and there, you want to make sure while you're preparing to go to market, you get the painter in there, like I said, you get the plumber in there and you get the electrician in there and you wanna get quotes on all of these jobs because Typically, during an escrow, when a buyer does ask for repairs, and keep in mind, as a seller, you're not obligated to make these repairs, but to make these escrows go smoothly, you're gonna wanna help out the process as a seller. But typically, a buyer is gonna ask for repairs or credits back to them, and you want to know the dollar amount for every single fix that's in your house. And of course, there are some buyers that do ask for ridiculous repairs that might not be necessary. But again, if you have a plumbing issue or you have an electrical issue that you know that needs to be fixed, you wanna be ahead of the game because a buyer who's asking, let's just say for a leaking faucet to be fixed and they're saying they want $500 for that and you're not aware of how much that actually costs to have a plumber go to the house or a handyman, well then you might just say yes during the process because you don't want that buyer to walk away from the sale of your home. So instead of just saying yes and bending over backwards for this buyer, you want to have those quotes in hand. You can go back and say, look, dear Mr. Mr. Seller, I already have a quote for that, and here it is. It's not $500, it's $300. So you wanna be well equipped in that scenario. And if you're walking around your house and you simply have no idea what needs to be fixed or you don't see any issues, you can get a pre-sale inspection. Typically, inspectors charge around $300 to $500 just depending on your area, but they give you a full report of every single thing in your house. Their job is to basically pick apart your house and go over the electrical, plumbing, roof, etc. And they give you Typically, you want to have your inspector show you pictures of every little thing and they highlight in red in their report what should be fixed and what needs to be up to today's building standards. And keep in mind, this doesn't need to be done before the home sale. It's not a requirement as a seller. But if you wanna be well prepared and well equipped for a buyer to come in and try to negotiate repairs and you already have the report, it simply makes the process a little bit easier for both parties. But again, as a seller, it keeps you equipped and ready to know what these certain repairs are gonna cost. So after you know what's going on with your house, you wanna declutter and clean. Again, you've probably been in this house for at least a year or two 
and you have your furniture everywhere, you have things out on the counter, you want to basically make the house look as empty as possible, as decluttered as possible. The more things out, the more it could trigger a buyer to look in a different direction. You wanna make sure that your house is presentable, like you're not even living there. And of course, as a seller, that's the hardest thing to do because you're still living your day-to-day -day life, you're going to work, you're coming home, and you may have kids and they may be throwing crap everywhere. And so to live like this while you are trying to sell a house is a big thing because you don't know when the next buyer is gonna to wanna to come in and see that home, when another buyer's agent's gonna bring them through. So trying to declutter and stay as clean and organized as possible will definitely help you sell your home. So this kind of goes along with decluttering. You want to depersonalize your home. So if you have religious symbols, you have family photos everywhere, uh, pictures of your dog, you want to take these down and put them away. You want to have the buyer see the full potential of the home. And again, unfortunately, you're going to have people walking through the house who may not be as religious as you or may not like the breed of dog that you have things are crazy so you want to take these down put them away you don't want to have a buyer be turned off due to some random picture you have hanging on your fridge and not want to buy the house over something that triggers within their brain that they actually don't want to live here because they didn't like the type of dog you have and they're worried about other things. So again, depersonalizing the house is a goal if you want to prepare your house to go to market. So after you declutter and you remove your personal belongings from the walls, you wanna consider staging your house. So it's proven that staging your house does maximize the dollar amount that you're gonna receive in your pocket. It makes the house look a lot better and it gives a buyer a better feel for what they're going to be living in and it paints a nice picture with new furniture in the house. So if you're staging your house, it's definitely something you wanna talk with your realtor about. A lot of the time sellers do cover this cost, but it's not a bad idea to ask your real estate agent to share this cost with you. And this cost can vary just depending on the size of your house as well as the bedroom count. So for me personally, I've had studio staged i've had bigger house staged and you can start from three thousand all the way up to twenty thousand dollars from what i've seen and of course if you're living in some big mansion it could be a lot more but definitely talk with your realtor about staging if you want to maximize your dollar amount so once you've made these repairs and you've decluttered your house depersonalized your house you now want to have this checklist of every time a potential buyer comes to your house so spot check rooms for clutter or dirt before you have a showing vacuum or sweep wipe down sinks faucets clean kitchen countertops empty the trash put away pet dishes sweep your front porch open curtains and shades make sure the house is super light and bright turn on the lights in potentially set the mood and play some soft music not only will this help the potential buyer walk through and like the house a little bit more and set the mood everything's great everything's clean but this will also help your realtor they will definitely appreciate you getting the house ready and of course this isn't easy as a seller but you will see the results in the end if you do put in the work to sell your house so when you've lived in the house for a long time like i said before it's hard to see the things that can make or break an offer within your house, little fixes here, decluttering, et cetera, et cetera. You've been in that house for quite some time. And so consider asking family or friends of their honest feedback once you've gone through those steps to get your house ready for sale. Again, your realtor will try to help you out here and there, but they don't want to hurt your feelings. So the people you can actually trust, friends and family, will probably give you an honest opinion. And lastly, remove yourself and your memories from the house and put yourself in a prospective buyer's shoes 
and take a look at your house and be honest with yourself. But anyways, these little tips should help you get your house ready to sell and get that top dollar. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.